Hello, everyone. It's Lee Henson, President and Founder of Agile Dad, and it's time for today's episode of The Daily Stand-Up. Without any further ado, let's get started. This week, we're covering Scrum anti-patterns and things that I observed and ways to solve them. So hopefully, this will continue down our journey on the Scrum anti-pattern path and give you some insight. So we covered our first three. The first three that we talked about for Scrum anti-patterns was believing that Scrum is a universal solution, uh, forgetting that Scrum is part of Agile implicitly, and focusing on Scrum compliance too heavily. Today, I want to kick off with number four. Number four is the one that leadership struggles with the most. For some reason, they believe that Scrum means faster, cheaper, and better. We're going to be able to build things faster. It's going to cost us a lot less money. It's going to be better than it was. While if you adapt all the things that Scrum offers, this could prove to be true, I think that this is a problem that resolves, revolves around culture and mindset that the organization takes on. And, and you know, I, I don't think that that's going to fix, you know, it's not easy to fix. Let me explain. So when people ask me, does Scrum mean anything? Does it, does it, does it stand for anything? Is it an acronym? I always tell people it's the Society for the Complete Ruination and Undoing of Mankind, but that's simply not true. What I tell people instead is that the the impetus that scrum means we're going to build things faster while it could be true over time it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be true up front uh will it make things cheaper over time it should but it's not going to be that way right away i I think what i'm trying to say is when you take into consideration that scrum is empirical and that it revolves it involves a lot of inspect and adapt and a lot of circular motion in order to get the feedback cycle flowing well so that you can get to where you need to be I think that that's where it's going to be most beneficial. It's not the precise formula for faster, cheaper, better, but it does revolve around, you know, evolution of how to fix problems and reflection. And the more we inspect and adapt and the better our feedback loop is, the better overall success we're going to have with understanding how Scrum works and what Scrum can promise. So when leadership comes to me and they ask me, you know, we're talking about implementing Agile, we're talking about implementing Scrum. And I ask them why, you know, what's the main reason, you know, what, and you often see that in, in, in fact, in my 12 step program, the number one thing I ask is why did, you know, wh- why agile, why did you choose agile and what problem are you trying to solve? And the answers that I get there are very surprising. And what I found is that once people understand they can make better choices, but I think a lot of times people don't come in with that opportunity to reflect and figure out what's going on. Coming in at number five. We're only going to implement Scrum in the IT group. The rest of the organization is going to do something else because Scrum is designed for technology, right? And oh my goodness, I've heard this, right? The whole point of Scrum is to make sure everyone's beating to the same drum, that we have the customer in a room and we can talk about real world problems that your end user is having. This isn't just about developers and testers. I think that when you get everyone in a room involved and you involve the business and you involve the stakeholders and you start asking them the hard questions, that's what you need to do. That's what you need to know in order to figure out uh, when you need to pivot or adjust, or are you getting things right? The whole point of Scrum is to make sure we're building working, tested products and services that meet the end customer's needs. And if we can't do that, I think that we need to get in the habit of doing that. We need to find ways to get the end users and the customers and everyone on the same page. So anyone who's taken my class before knows we talk about the importance of a po bafata, where we have business analysts that study the consumer needs, functional analysts that understand from a functional perspective how things should be implemented strategically. And of course, we have uh, the technical analyst who understands the ins and outs of how things are going to be implemented you know, uh, technologically. So we can make sure we're focused on things like architecture and infrastructure and uh, aligning that with business alignment and strategic alignment. Uh, And I think the final one for today is we're going to talk about something called the Scrum Leadership Gap. When starting out with Scrum, it's very tempting for people to say, oh, we have self-organized teams. We have no hierarchy anymore. We're going to flatten everything out. But in Scrum, there's actually two new leadership roles that are introduced. And these are going to surprise you. One's called Scrum Master and one's called Product Owner. And I think that if you don't understand these positions and you don't understand the roles and you don't understand what they do, it's hard for teams to say everybody's on the same page and everyone's on the same team, because the truth is you're only going to work as hard as, and you're only going to work as well as your leadership guides you. And the scrum master and product owner uh, can either really support and help the team become just instrumental in building products and services, or 
they can be the roadblock that stands in a way of leadership achieve, or a team achieving great things if they're not the right leadership. So I think you have to sit down and ask yourself, is a scrum master committed to evolving themselves into being a good leader? Is the product owner interested in helping other product owners and lift them up and supporting and serving other product owners? Do they understand concepts of limiting whip and why? And are they trying real hard to make certain that they have an understanding of the core needs of the organization, but also the needs of the team? And I think that when you discover evolutionary leadership and you discover the way people uh, work, and it becomes part of a psychology study for you within your organization, that that's when you're going to gain the best benefits of implementing Agile strategically within the organization. So there you go. That's our first six. So recap real quick to make sure you got all six, starting from the very top. Number one, believe, if you believe that Scrum is a universal, you might have a Scrum anti-pattern if you believe Scrum is a universal solution. If you're forgetting that Scrum is only a part of Agile. Um, if you focus on Scrum compliance implicitly, if you believe that Scrum equals faster, cheaper, or better, if you are only implementing Scrum for your technology group, or if you uh, have a Scrum leadership gap where leadership just really doesn't understand and you try to flatten everything so much and you know become self-organizing and there's no role for the Scrum master or product owner to take on some of those leadership responsibilities. Well, we're a good portion of the way there. We're going to continue tomorrow with some more of these topics. As always, we encourage you to tune in to the Daily Stand-Up Podcast and encourage your friends to do so. And if there's a topic that you want us to cover, make sure you reach out to us because we'd love to talk about what's important to you. As always, we encourage you to stay healthy, stay well, and stay agile, my friends. Until next time, do take care.